All right. Hello, everyone. I'm back here today with another video, and Happy New Year. And I say that because it's been a while since I made a video. Just been kind of busy. Haven't had time to make videos. I was making quite a few, and it kind of got in the way of some other things. So rather than stop making videos altogether, I just kind of thought I would take a little bit of a hiatus from making videos. But I am back with a new video in this new year. And this video is also going to be something new for me because I am going to do an album review in this video. I haven't done any album reviews yet, so it's definitely thinking that, yeah, I'm big into music and kind of wanted to review some albums. So it's kind of thinking, okay, so where do I start? Which album should I review first? And I think it's probably most appropriate to do an album review on Metallica's latest album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. That is going to be my first album review that I'm going to do. Because, you know, I, I listened to the album and I thought, yeah, I definitely have to do a review on this. And this is definitely, like I, like I said, a great place to start. Now, Metallica, just to let you know, is... Uh, and has always been one of my favorite bands. They're in the top four of my all-time favorite bands. And, uh, you know, I, I never wanted to dislike or hate Metallica in any way. But, you know, I have to agree with a lot of others that I have not liked the past few albums they have come out with. I was... Not a fan of Reload that much, but I liked some of it. I did not like Saint Anger at all. I thought Metallica was trying too hard to kind of sound like Disturbed and sound like other bands that they influenced and not really sounding like Metallica, not sounding like what had made them famous to begin with. You know, I I would have loved it if Metallica would have went, you know, full ACDC and just followed the same formula that started in Ride the Lightning, you know, continued with Master of Puppets and then ended with Injustice for All. I would have loved it if they just followed that formula their whole career. And why not? You know, I mean, it was really a great formula, really a great sound they, they had going. And I would have loved it if they would have continued it. Now, I have to say right now that I did listen to this album, and I listened to it multiple times, which is something I haven't done since Load came out. You know, I, I haven't listened to a Metallica album multiple times, like I said, since Load came out. And, you know, that was because, you know, I, I, I did like Load, or I liked half of Load. I actually had the cassette for load and the whole first half of that cassette I had always thought was you know pretty good <coughs> the second half uh, maybe had a couple good songs on it but for the most part it was pretty weak you know and people have said that if you've combined load and reload together you'd actually have a decent album and I agree with that if you combine load and reload together you'd have a really strong Metallica album you know load sometimes has been called a sellout album, although I completely disagree with that. I don't think Load was a sellout album, you know, really at all. Yeah, Metallica cut their hair and they changed their image. They didn't really change their sound a whole lot. Yeah, they developed more of a blues-based rock guitar sound, and, you know, they they changed their style a bit and how their approach to music, but it wasn't really, they didn't really sell out a whole lot in music. They sold out a bit more in image, I would say. I mean, they did cut their hair, which, you know, is there's nothing wrong with that. It was probably just the timing in which they chose to cut their hair. You know, when a lot of other bands were doing it, and they kind of jumped on the bandwagon there. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, as far as sound, I mean... I remember there were people who heard Until It Sleeps and then thought Metallica was trying to sound like Nirvana, which I disagree with 
because that sounds more like it was influenced by Marconi, the guy who did the spaghetti western music. Sounds way more influenced by that than it does Nirvana. So, yeah, that's just sort of my take on that, my two cents on all that. But, uh, yeah, so then, you know, Reload came out, and then St. Anger, like I said. I, I do know some people like St. Anger, but, you know, I, I just, like I said, didn't care for it. I didn't like the fact that there were no solos. I already mentioned how I thought they were kind of sounding too much like Disturbed. Nothing against Disturbed, but it's not Metallica. It's not, you know, their sound. It's not what they're known for and what they excel at. So, you know, when I heard this album, I didn't know what to think. Oh, another thing I should mention, Death Magnetic. Another album I maybe gave one listen to and didn't listen to it again. You know, I don't... I know there was a lot of talk about that album being loud, right? Being very loud. And I didn't... I don't know. I, I didn't notice that. I, I gave the album maybe one listen and then, you know, didn't, you know, listen to it ever again from what I can remember. But then uh, this album came out, and it's been eight years since Metallica had put out an official Metallica album. There was that thing they did with Lou Reed that a lot of people did not like, particularly, you know, Metallica fans. How could Metallica do this? But, you know, the way I look at that is it's just, you know, how could it really be a sellout album? I mean, it certainly wasn't. You don't do an album with Lou Reed to sell out. I mean, it was just a uh, Lou Reed album featuring Metallica, you know, that that's all that was, I remember at the time I worked, was working at uh, Sam's Club at the time, and uh, around, around the time that album came out, and there was a guy there, I was in the tire department, uh, you know, um, he was a manager, and big metalhead, and yeah, I remember telling him that yeah, Metallica did an album with Lou Reed, and he did not believe me. Yeah, you know, he did not believe me on that at all. But, you know, it was true. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, that whole Lulu thing, I mean, you know, what I could say on that, um, you know, Metallica, believe it or not, were, as far as I know, Velvet Underground fans for a long time. I read an old interview of Cliff Burton going back to the 80s, and he does say in that interview that Metallica were, in fact, Velvet Underground fans. So, you know, I guess that could kind of make sense in a way that, you know, they would do an album with Lou Reed, that they would be interested in going in that direction because they were fans and they wanted to try something new and different. And I, I, I could definitely understand that. I mean, you know, it, it, it is good for artists to kind of venture off into, you know, the unknown and to try new things and, to, um, you know, broaden their horizons a bit and see what they could do that's new because maybe it'll work out for them. But in the case of Metallica, they already had something really good. You know, just in the same way ECDC realized they had something good, so they followed the same formula from the 70s to the present. You know, Metallica could have done the same thing, really. But, you know, they didn't. I kind of wish they would have. Maybe, you know, if Cliff Burton, you know, had not died, and people always speculate this, that they would have, you know, stayed the course they were on, that they wouldn't have made all the changes. And, you know, that, that could be, that that's hard to say. Uh, you know, definitely I was a huge fan of Cliff Burton. Maybe I'll do a video on him, but I really liked what he brought to Metallica's music. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so in regards to this new album, I, I gave it a listen, and then I listened to it again and again and again, multiple times, because I really liked it. Metallica truly are back. This is definitely a comeback album from Metallica. Now, I could remember listening to albums back in the 90s, and always these bands would say things like, yeah, we're going back to our roots on this next album. 
then you get the album, and they never really did, right? They never went back to the roots. You always heard, like, modern influences, like, uh, they say they're going back to their roots. Then why does this kind of sound like Nine Inch Nails? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you would say that a lot back in back in the 90s. You know, I, I just remember that. But the band would be like, no, we're, no our fans are going to love this because we're going to go back to the sound we originally had that made us famous. But, you know, like I said, they, they never would. But now, as of late, bands actually have been going back to their roots. Bands actually have been putting out material that sounds like their old stuff. Certainly saw this with Black Sabbath with the album 13. Judas Priest with the album Redeemer of Souls. Both of those are excellent albums, in my opinion. Definitely, you know, I, I don't know if you call them comeback albums or what, but, you know, definitely some great material on those albums. But, uh... This, you know, Metallica album, same thing. You know, Megadeth earlier in the year, I believe, kind of did the same thing. I hadn't really liked, you know, very many Megadeth albums that had come out in a long time. And now with uh, Disutopia, I really liked it. You know, and same with Metallica. You know, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Definitely a great album. So bands are putting out good music now. You know, people often complain and say... You know, music died, or the music business is done. But yet, at the same time, you know, these bands really are putting out some good stuff and stuff that rivals the best work they've done in their career. Now, as far as like Iron Maiden is concerned, I have not liked the past two Maiden albums. But yet, I do believe they had a comeback album with Brave New World. I thought that was excellent. I thought that uh, definitely, you know equals any of what Maiden did in the 80s, but, so yeah, um, you know, like I said, I, I thought this was an excellent album, I listened to it a lot, I do recommend it, there are, you know, a lot of good songs on it, and, uh, just take a look at the tracks, the, uh, first song, Hardwired, is uh, a song very reminiscent of, like, Damage Incorporated. You know, really has that kind of Damage Incorporated vibe to it. In fact, that's the first thing I thought when I first listened to that song. Really, just kind of like Damage Incorporated, you know? Then, uh, Atlas Rise is definitely like a return to kind of the more melodic sound that Metallica had. More that, like, Cliff Burton kind of melodic sound. You know, Cliff Burton had such a good sense of melody. And Metallica was always good with those, like, you know, single note kind of guitar riffs. You know, kind of like what Iron Maiden does. But Metallica definitely kind of made that style their own. You know, they had kind of their own way of doing it. And you definitely, you know, hear a return to that kind of dual guitar harmonized sound that, you know, really made Metallica great. Because in my opinion, the reason why I've always been a big Metallica fan is because, you know, Metallica really did an excellent job of combining melody with heaviness. That was always something Metallica did that was so great, and that's why they became one of my favorite bands. You know, a band that could combine the melody with the power, you know, that, that's what Metallica did, and, you know, that's what I think it's all about, and, you know, they did such a good job at that, and you definitely hear a return to that sound on this album, uh, Now That We're Dead is another good one, uh, Moth Into Flame is another one that I really liked a lot, uh, Dream No More is another one that stands out. Not really a great song, but, you know, it's a H.P. Lovecraft song. Metallica's singing about and writing songs about Cthulhu again. So, in, you know, in my opinion, that's pretty good. <laughs> I really liked when Metallica did all that, and they're doing it again. You know, I because, you know, H.P. Lovecraft is my favorite uh, fiction writer. So, you know, because of that, 
you know, I, I've always liked their, their Lovecraft stuff, you know. Same with, like, you know, the thing that should not be, you know, has often been called the thing that should not be on Master of Puppets. But yet, the lyrics are great. And that's kind of the vibe I get with this song. Although I do like, I do like the riffing in it. I don't know. It's not a bad, it's not really a bad song, you know. Not super strong, but it sort of almost has a sad but true kind of vibe to it from what I can remember. But, yeah, you know, it has that H.P. Lovecraft theme to it. Uh, Halo on Fire, also a good song. And this, I should mention right here, this is a two-disc album. So you then have the uh, second disc, and there's a number of songs on that. Also some great tunes on the second disc. Not as, not nearly as strong as the first. In fact, there are some duds on this album. I, I will be honest. There certainly are some duds. They're on the second disc primarily. <coughs> and, uh, you know, th these songs... You know, they, they they could have you know done without some of them. Definitely, kind of duds or fillers or whatever you want to call them. But yeah, just you know, very. And you'll hear, you know, people who've done other reviews of this album. You'll hear people talk about how they sound very plodding and a little monotonous. And I I do agree with that. There definitely is a feel of that. You know, there's some songs like. Uh, for example, on the second album, there's a song called Man Unkind. I mean, really, Metallica? You you guys can do better than Man un Unkind. <laughs> yeah, but you certainly have... Metallica certainly has before in the past written some very strong songs, some great material. They could do better than something like that. Here Comes Revenge. Um, eh, I remember that being kind of weak. Um, I Am Savage... I don't remember that being too great. Murder One. Now, that's about Lemmy. And you would think, you know, Metallica would do a song about Lemmy because Motorhead is a huge influence on Metallica. They really were. I mean, Metallica's even at times been referred to as an American Motorhead. And, you know, that whole, like, new wave of British heavy metal was very much an influence on Metallica, as well as like 70s hard rock metal bands, but that new wave of British heavy metal, huge influence on the Metallica sound. Spit Out the Bone, that's the best song on the uh, second album, you know, by far, it really is. Again, there's some more melodic stuff like I talked about earlier. So, yeah, all in all, you know, it it, it was a great album. You know, like I said, there are a few duds on the album, but it's definitely a great album. I, they probably didn't have to do a double album. They probably could have, you know, had just the album be just, you know, one album and then maybe an extra song and there'd only be maybe one dud on the whole album. So, yeah, but like I said, you know, Metallica is back. Uh, as far as the writing, I, I know, uh, James and, uh, Lars, again, wrote the whole album. Uh, Rob Trio, you know, the bass player, I don't believe he, he contributed to anything, because my understanding is he's been trying to get this project on the eccentric bass player, Jaco Pistorius, off the ground. He's been really trying to get this documentary and it's been taking him a while. And I guess it's going to be a really, you know, good documentary when he finishes it, you know, because a lot of people don't know too much about this, you know, Jacob Astorius who's in you know, like Weather Report and that, but should be good, you know, when, when it's done. Also, uh, Kirk Hammett. Kirk Hammett apparently wanted to contribute songs, but he lost 250 guitar riffs that were on his iPhone, and he lost it in the Copenhagen airport. So, he was unable to contribute anything to this album, which, you know, I, I don't know if that was necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, because it did force him to really work on his solos more, and his solos were the best you've heard in years. You know, and, uh, you know, they, they, they really were. So he really focused on that. So maybe it was 
a blessing in disguise. I don't know. You never know when things like that happen. If it was a blessing or a curse, you just don't know. Because, yeah, like I said, it did force him to really put a really strong emphasis on his soloing. And he definitely did a great job with these solos. So, yeah, you know, it's all I really have to say about this album. I mean, I know the Grammys had just happened. Metallica was at the Grammys. You know, maybe a probably subject for another video. Maybe I'll probably do another video on that. Maybe I'll even do another video where I talk more about Metallica's past albums and, you know, my opinion on them. But, yeah, that's all I got if you watched this video. As always, I thank you for watching. Have a great night.